بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وآت ذا القربى حقه والمسكين وابن السبيل ولا تبذر تبذيرا إن المبذرين كانوا إخوان الشياطين وكان الشيطان لربه كفورا صدق الله العلي العظيم Today's subject is about being an environmentalist Muslim, a Muslim who cares about his or her environment, an environmentally friendly person. I mentioned last night in the first part that climate change and global warming is something really serious. It's a serious threat to our existence here on earth, to our future, to our families, to our health. We have to think about it seriously. We should be responsible here. This is an individual responsibility as well as collective responsibility of the community, the people, especially the people who believe in God, the people of conscience, the people who have good hearts, the people who act responsible to think how I can contribute into saving this planet Earth. Maybe I cannot save the entire Earth. I cannot, you know, lead a major reform. But believe me, sometimes small steps, humble steps, ends up having major impact and deep impact on our life. And you know, this climate change is a serious threat with severe impacts, and we are feeling it right now, here in our state, state of California. If you follow the news, I, I don't know whether you, when you drive on the freeway, you see what, what you read on these Amber Alerts, that they tell you we have severe drought and this is not exaggeration. We do have severe drought. It is affecting our pockets, our finance, our economy, and our psyche too. Yes, it leaves, unfortunately, an adverse effect on our uh, psychology, on our thinking, because when there is a drought, it means that everything has been affected and touched in a bad way by this drought. So we have to respect the nature. We have to respect the ecosystem, ecological system. We have to respect the environment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be builders, not destroyers. People who come to this earth to fix it, to put it together, put it back together. Not some people who live here for some, some years and then they leave this earth in disarray. Allah wants us to be good inhabitants. And I mentioned last night the verse in the Holy Quran, وَاسْتَعْمَرَكُمْ فِيهَا أَنْشَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ وَاسْتَعْمَرَكُمْ فِيهَا استعمركم comes from استعمار, from building. He wants you to be builders. Builders, fixers of this earth. So when you leave it, you leave a good legacy to those who come after you. Those who come after you, they say, wow, May God have mercy on those who were before us, our predecessors, our forefathers. See what they left for us. Clean place, clean environment. This is what we should do. And we should always, always encourage our children. Encourage our children to take care of this environment and to tell them that this earth is amana, trust. Allah left this earth, this house, the earth that belongs to him, a trust in our hands. And he's testing us. 
to see whether we deliver this mission appropriately or are we going to misappropriate this amana or this trust? It's an imtihan. I mentioned last night, when you speak about Islam, people think that Islam is only prayers and fasting and hajj and zakat and that's it, and hijab. But Islam is much bigger than that. Islam involves in all aspects of your life. Islam wants you to be healthy. Islam wants you to be happy, prosperous, advanced. So, and one of the most important things that we must take care of is the environment. To take care of the environment, to save it, not to exploit it and destroy it. I mentioned yesterday, the first area I mentioned was about water and also today I want to mention about conserving energy. Conserving energy has a, a big impact on our life, my friends. I'll give you an example. Now, how many of you know, especially the young ones, those who go to school, how this energy, electricity is generated? Any, any person? How is it produced locally? How is it produced? How do we get it? Coal. Mostly, most of the energy in the, in the world is produced by coal. And because they burn the coal, because the steam that gets out of that, it will power these generators. And the generators, they generate electricity. So mostly, mostly in America, in Europe, elsewhere, they depend on coal. And when coal is burned, what happened? What do you think when coal is burning? What is happening? Before this, the destruction of the ozone layer, what happens when the coal is burning? CO2, what does that mean? It means carbon emissions. Is carbon emissions good or bad? Is it a, it's bad. This is very harmful pollutions. And you can see it, people who live in Los Angeles. You can see there's always a thick layer of smog lingering over the city, always, always. This is bad. This is bad for the trees. This is bad for your heart. This is bad for your mind. This is bad for everything, for your pocket. This is terrible. So imagine, what should we do here? We should conserve. Allah says, إِنَّ الْمُبَذِّرِينَ كَانُوا إِخْوَانَ الشَّيَاطِينَ Tabdeer when you squander. Tabdeer when you use something above your need. You don't need it, but you still use it. Let's say in your house, or even here in this mosque, if we need only 10 of, 10 of these lights, then 15 are not good. 20 are not good. We have to use only 10. I always tell the children that when you are in your room and the lights are on, once you leave your room, what should you do first? Turn it off. Even if you are leaving your room for two minutes, even if you are going to the bathroom and coming back, turn it off. Don't put it on. Don't put it on because it counts. These are small things at the end, they're going to count. Not only going to, to pay higher electricity bill, not only that, not, it, not, not only is going to affect your pocket in a bad way, but it's going to affect your health too. When you have these carbon emissions increasing, it's going to destroy your health. So you have to take care of that. One time I said to my, one of my friends, Christian a priest, I said to him, Christians during Christmas, they do an insult to Jesus. They don't celebrate him. They do an insult to him. If he was alive and he would come, he would not agree with all these decorations and lights, extra spending. He would say rather than putting all these decorations and lights and you know, give that money to the needy, to the orphans, to the poor, to those who don't have a clean drinking water. Two billion people today, two billion people today on earth are hungry. 
2 billion people, 40% of the population of earth. They live below poverty level. Jesus will say, use that money to feed the poor, the needy. I don't need decorations. The best decoration for me, the best birthday gift for me is to be good Christian, is to think about others. And the same thing Prophet Muhammad says. The best gift to me is to be a good Muslim, a thoughtful Muslim, a Muslim with conscience, a, mus a Muslim who thinks of others, not just himself. So try to save electricity. Please try to save it. Unnecessary lights, stay away from them. Sometimes lights outside, outside your house. You don't need them. You don't need that. Save. You have to save. You have to feel the pain that we are suffering. You have to be responsible. This is number one when it comes to electricity. So saving energy, it means you are saving the earth, making the earth, inshallah, safer. The second is saving, conserving on water, especially here in our area. Now, if you go to other areas, they have floods. And do you know that even with areas that they have a plenty of water, still they declare drought in their areas? State of a drought, do you know that? They have rain, and still they tell you that we do not have enough water. So we have to conserve. The hadith says even if you are standing on a river, on a bank of a river, and the water is running, gushing forth, Streaming, when you do wudu, conserve the water. Conserve, subhanAllah. Even if the water looks, you know, in abundance, plenty of water, your responsibility is to conserve because Allah does not like squandering, wasting. The squanderer are the siblings of the shaitans. Satan. Siblings of the Satans. So you don't want to be the sibling, a sibling to a sh shaitan. You don't want to do that. So stay away from wasting energy or wasting water. I said last night that 50% of the drinking water supplied to our homes unfortunately goes down the drain in the toilets. 40%. 40%. While many million, at least one billion people today on earth, they don't have access to clean drinking water. They don't have access. A survey says, I was reading something very astonishing, that when you turn off the tap while you are brushing your teeth, you know how much water you, you conserve? When you brush your teeth, some people, they keep the water running. Shh running five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes he goes and answers the phone and the water is running this is not good you know how much water you 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 save when you turn off the tap when you are uh, brushing it's five gallons per time when you wash yes and I said yesterday last night cutting 10 minutes on your shower Two minutes, sorry, two minutes, very good, alhamdulillah. Because the entire shower is 10 minutes. So when you cut back only two minutes, you save how many gallons? Huh? 10 gallons of water. When, when, you, when you cut back only two minutes. And I know some of the young generation, they stand, you know, in the shower for hours, hours and hours. That's not good, my friends. My sons, my daughters, that's not good. You have to review your life. You have to look back at what you are doing. Change. The month of Ramadan is the month of change. The month of transformation. And these areas we have, not just to change the way we do Quran and Dua, also the way you, you take a shower. You have to change it. You have to conserve the water, especially when the governor comes and he says, we are in a serious condition. We are facing serious threats. We have to take him serious. Yes, he is a politician, but not always he lies. 
And in this area, he does not lie. He's right. We can see it. Where is the rain? Have you seen? When was the last time you saw rain here? I don't remember. I forgot. So we have to take these things serious. And then it says, it says, so when you, when you turn on the, turn off the, the tap when you are brushing your teeth, you say five gallons and the survey says as much water as the average person in Africa uses a whole day of a drinking, cooking, bathing and a cleaning. Five gallons. They use five gallons a month. And here we waste hundreds of gallons every day. So we have to take care of that. Al-Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam, our Imam, our leader. You know what he says? He says, Adna al-Israf, Iraqatu fadlil ina. You know when you drink water in a cup, huh? sometimes this much remains. So some people, what, what would they do with it? They toss it away. He says, this is Israf. Don't do that. This is forbidden. Don't toss it away. Either drink it or put it in the, in the pot. Put it in the... I, I go myself, you know what I do when there is some, some extra water? I go to the grass and I put it there. Yeah, water the, the trees with it. Do not waste it. Don't waste even a few drops. Do not waste. Imam says, this is Israf. This is Israf. You are damaging the environment. You are being ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be grateful. Try to be grateful in al mubadhirin and then he says at-tabdhiru anwanul faqa those people who waste you know they are used to 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 the to wasting you know food water energy ultimately they're going to go bankrupt they're going to go bankrupt and you don't want to do that you have to be thankful to what Allah has given i know some families who had money, they, had, they were well off, but unfortunately they did not know the value of money. They were squanderers, mubadhirin. They spend excessively on things that are not worth it. At the end they lost their properties, they lost their businesses, and they lost their life. So try to be, to appreciate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, if it is extra for you, it, doesn't, it does not mean that it is extra for others. I said last night, unfortunately, we are a spoiled nation here in America. We take everything for granted. But if you take a trip to India, to Africa, to some other places in Asia, and you see how people live in severe poverty, then you're going to review your life. You're going to change yourself. We have to change ourselves. We have to share this earth with others. Even though they are not close to us, they are thousands of miles away, we have to be thoughtful of them. Leave some resources for them. I mentioned last night, we are only 5% of the population of earth. The Americans, they make only 5%, 5% 300 million, 5%. But we consume 25% of the resources of Earth here in America. 25%. One fourth of the resources we consume. Them. Not because we need them. Believe me, we do not need them. The other day I was in San Diego down here. And when you pass by some restaurants and some supermarkets, you know the fruits after two, two days, they dispose it outside. And you see some people going there at the back of the supermarket and, you know, searching in these dumpsters and the trash. And they get, and they show you, they tell us, look at this fruit, it has nothing, it's nothing wrong with it. It's not rotten, it's not bad. But they dispose it. It's not good. This is not good. When you go to a restaurant, you have extra food, take it with you home. Eat it. The following day, don't let that food go to the trash. Don't, don't allow your children, your neighbors, teach them to value the food. This is ni'mah. This is a grace. 
This is bounties. These are bounties of Allah. Today we have them, maybe tomorrow we might not have them. Huh? Don't take things for granted. I have seen some people who were spoiled, they had an extravagant life, and then after that they lost everything. They became beggars. And the best insurance to keep the blessing of God continuing is to be thankful to Allah. How to be thankful just to say thank you, that's not enough. Thank you with your behavior, with your deeds, when you help others with what you have. Share. My friends, in Ramadan we have to learn to share. The food we eat, we share it. The drink, we share it. The clothing, we share it. The money we have in our pockets, we share it. Everything you have, you have to share. Imam Zainul Abidin, alayhi salatu wassalam, Ali ibn al Hussein. Allahumma salli ala Every year, he used to share it twice, twice every six months. Once every six months, twice a year. Everything he had, he would share it with the poor and the needy. And Allah will give you back. Because Allah has all these bounties that are reserved for you. He wants you to see spending them, giving them, so he will bring them. He bring them. So try to think of others. And then we go to the saving of papers, something that we don't, we don't even think about. I've seen some ulama, scholars, great scholars. When I go to their office, I sit next to them. I see they have a piece of paper like this and they use every single space in it. To the extent that sometimes you get confused, you can't read the paper. So I tell him, why is this? He says, because I want to save paper. And then come here and look at our kids. Look how they spoil, really spoil papers, unlimited, unlimited. They just put one line, sometimes one letter on a paper, and then they dispose it. This is not good. Do you know, my friends, every single American family, Every single American family, they waste one and a half a tree per year. One and a half a, one and a half a tree per year on junk mail. Junk mail. The mail that comes. Today I, I brought the mail. Believe me, all of it was junk. All of it went, alhamdulillah, no bill. Alhamdulillah, I was so happy. <laughs> this much you know, papers went into the recycling. This is not good. This is not good. I know some families, they go to the post office and they tell them, no junk mail. Don't bring me junk mail. This is not good. One and a half a tree. And these trees, they protect us. What does a tree do? Can someone tell me? Hmm? Absorb what? Carbon and? And give us what? And do we need oxygen or not? Can you survive without oxygen? So you have to appreciate the tree. In Islam, it's haram. قَطْعُ الْأَشْجَارِ haram. كَنْدَنَ دِرَخْتَهَا haram as that Islam. Do not cut trees. One of the things that we do not do during Hajj, when we go to Hajj in the state of Ihram, even outside the state of Ihram, you are not allowed in Mecca and its vicinity, the haram, one of the things that are forbidden, illegal, is to cut trees. You cannot cut the tree. The tree has to be respected. The tree is serving us. Serving us with the most vital, most important thing that we need in this life. Oxygen. Why do we cut it? You know in America in one year, in one year, look at the wastage of papers in America. Every single year in America, two million books, listen, two million books, 350 million magazines and 24 billion newspapers are thrown away in the recycle. In America alone. How much does that cost us? It costs a lot. We have to we are happy that we live sometimes in a modern country, industrialized country. 
affluent country, affluent society. But it has a heavy price. We have to be conscious of that. Therefore, try not to waste. And, and even this, sometimes I disagree with this, believe me. Let me read about it. It says in America, 1.5 million tons of a plastic is used every year to produce these things. 1.5 million tons, tons of plastic. You can have a filter at home on your faucet and you can use the, the water from your fa faucet. Or at least, at least... If you can't survive, you think you cannot survive without these bottles, at least recycle them. Try to recycle them to save our earth. And then, of course, let me tell you something, another figure, and this is our mothers and our daughters and sisters should pay attention to it. And that is the amount of oil that goes down the drainage into the ocean and it creates a lot of hazard for creatures in the water, for us and for others. 29 million gallons of oil go into the North America's oceans every year. 29 million gallons of oil each year. It says 5 million gallons of them by tanker spills like what happened in, in uh, Santa Barbara the other day. Five million, five million. But 24 million gallons caused by human activities, such as, number one, cooking oil, pouring cooking oil into the sink. Where does it go? It goes into the drainage, and then ultimately it ends up where? Into the ocean. Or even sometimes we don't pay attention to these small things. We think they are small. But look at this. Topping, topping off your gas tank. Have you seen some people, they keep pressing? That oil, that gas, goes into the drainage and goes into the, into the ocean. And also, hosing down the grease from our cars into the storm, storm drainage. Also, it goes into the ocean. And it is very, very harmful to the creatures in the ocean, to us, to the environment. These are small things. But when people do not care about them, the whole society, it leads into what we have today as what? Drought, climate change, global warming. Allah wants us to build this earth. To maintain it to take care of it when it comes to food you know the survey says that one-fourth of all food produced in the United States of America is wasted one-fourth one-fourth of the food and this is very true very true in this country one-fourth of the food how many of you how many of us we teach children when you eat Finish your food. I've seen even in some Islamic circles, Islamic communities, when they go and get the food, they fill the plate because man is a greedy, nature is a greedy. Especially when he's hungry, fasting, he thinks that he's going to eat the whole food. And then he eats half of it, sometimes less than half, and the rest goes where? You know where it goes. Wasted. It's halal. Take what is necessary. The Christian doctor said to the Abbasid Caliph in Baghdad, to the Ma'moon, he said to him, Ya Ma'moon, لَقَدْ جُمِعَ عِلْمُ الطِّبِّ فِي كِتَابِكُمْ All the science of medicine have been gathered in your book, the Holy Quran. Ma'moon said, really? Quran does not speak about medicine. He said, yes, it does. Allah says, كُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا كُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا that's the secret of well-being, good health. Eat, drink moderately, without excessiveness. Do you want to be healthy? Take care of your health? You have to take care of your diet. Don't overeat. 
in Ramadan, Ramadan, one of the one of the objectives, not all the objectives, one. Ramadan has many goals, many objectives. One of them is to maintain your health. But unfortunately, some people, they overeat in Ramadan. Every single food which is missing throughout the year, they bring it on the table on Ramadan. Food, sweet, you know, appetizers, before food, after food, in the middle, this, you know, between iftar and suhoor, you know. And these open buffets, they tell you, the most dangerous place on earth is all you can eat, believe me. <laughs> Avoid them, believe me. They, they, they charge you seven bucks, but they take away your health from you. Don't go there. All you can eat is not something good. It's not doing your service. It's doing you disservice. So in the month of Ramadan, we have to learn moderation in eating and drinking. And that will impact our psyche, our akhlaq. Someone with a full stomach is not going to change his akhlaq, believe me. We have to follow these rules. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَآتِ ذَا الْقُرْبَ حَقَّهُ وَالْمِسْكِينَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ وَلَا تُبَذِّرْ تَبْدِيرًا Stay away from tabdeer. Everything that above the need is tabdeer. Excessiveness, squandering, waste. Stay away from that. Even when it comes to clothing. If you need certain amount of clothing, shoes, get them. Don't get above that. It will be a liability against you. It will be a burden on you. Leave it for others. Give it for others. Our imams used to share their dress with people. He would wear it one or two days, one or, and then he give it to others. Share it. Try to share. The recipe for happiness, sa'ada in this life is when you share. When you think of others. وَلَا تُبَذِّرْ تَبْدِيرًا اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات تقبل صلاتنا وصيامنا ودعاءنا في هذا الشهر العظيم فرج اللهم oh Allah bring relief to the people of Yemen to the people of Syria to the people of Iraq to all all the mu'mineen, all the muslimin, all the humans worldwide, wherever there is suffering, Allah bring them relief and bring them happiness and bring unity to the heart of the Muslims and let us follow your path insha'Allah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ahli baytihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin.